Brought to you by Wikivd.com Republican Party, United States The Republican Party, commonly referred to as the GOP, is one of the two major contemporary political parties in the United States. The other being its historic rival the Democratic Party. The party is named after republicanism, the dominant value during the American Revolution, founded by anti-slavery activists, economic modernizers ex-Whigs and ex-Free Soilers in 1854. The Republicans dominated politics nationally and in the majority of northern states for most of the period between 1860 and 1932. The party has won 24 of the last 40 U.S. presidential elections and there have been a total of 19 Republican presidents the most from any one party. The first was 16th President Abraham Lincoln who served from 1860 until his assassination in 1865, and the most recent being 45th, and current President Donald Trump who took office on January 20, 2017. The Republican Party's current ideology is American conservatism which contrasts with the Democrats' more progressive platform. Its platform involves support for free market capitalism, free enterprise, fiscal conservatism, a strong national defense, deregulation and restrictions on labor unions. In addition to advocating for conservative economic policies, the Republican Party is socially conservative and seeks to uphold traditional values based largely on Judeo-Christian ethics. The GOP was strongly committed to protectionism and tariffs from its founding until the 1930s, when it was based in the industrial Northeast and Midwest. Since 1952, there has been a reversal against protectionism in the party's core support. Since the 1990s comes chiefly from the South the Great Plains, the Mountain States, and rural districts in the North as well as from conservative Catholics Mormons and evangelicals nationwide. As of 2017 the Republican Party was at its strongest position politically since 1928. In addition to holding the presidency, it controls majorities in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. The party also holds a majority of governorships and state legislatures. 19th century Founded in the Northern States in 1854 by anti-slavery activists, modernizers, ex-Whigs, and ex-Free Soilers, the Republican Party quickly became the principal opposition to the dominant Democratic Party and the briefly popular Know Nothing Party. The main cause was opposition to the Kansas-Nebraska Act which repealed the Missouri Compromise, by which slavery was kept out of Kansas. The Northern Republicans saw the expansion of slavery as a great evil. The first public meeting of the general anti-Nebraska movement where the name Republican was suggested for a new anti-slavery party was held on March 20, 1854 in a schoolhouse in Ripon, Wisconsin. The name was partly chosen to pay homage to Thomas Jefferson's Republican Party. The first official party convention was held on July 6, 1854 in Jackson, Michigan. By 1858, the Republicans dominated nearly all northern states. The Republican Party first came to power in the elections of 1860 when it won control of both houses of Congress and its candidate, Abraham Lincoln, was elected president. It oversaw the preserving of the Union, the end of slavery and the provision of equal rights to all men in the American Civil War and Reconstruction. 1861-1877 The Republicans' initial base was in the Northeast and the Upper Midwest. With the realignment of parties and voters in the third-party system the strong run of John C. Fremont in the 1856 United States presidential election demonstrated it dominated most Northern states. Early Republican ideology was reflected in the 1856 slogan, Free Labor, Free Land, Free Men. 
which had been coined by Salmon P. Chase, a senator from Ohio. Free labor referred to the Republican opposition to slave labor and belief in independent partisans and businessmen. Freeland referred to Republican opposition to the plantation system whereby slave owners could buy up all the good farmland, leaving the yeoman independent farmers the leftovers. The party strove to contain the expansion of slavery which would cause the collapse of the slave power and the expansion of freedom. Lincoln representing the fast-growing western states won the Republican nomination in 1860 and subsequently won the presidency. The party took on the mission of preserving the Union and destroying slavery during the American Civil War and over Reconstruction. In the election of 1864 it united with war Democrats to nominate Lincoln on the National Union Party ticket. The party's success created factionalism within the party in the 1870s. Those who felt that Reconstruction had been accomplished and was continued mostly to promote the large-scale corruption tolerated by President Ulysses S. Grant ran Horace Greeley for the presidency. The stalwarts defended Grant and the spoils system, the half-breeds led by Chester A. Arthur pushed for reform of the civil service in 1883. The Republican Party supported business generally hard money high tariffs to promote economic growth high wages and high profits generous pensions for Union veterans and the annexation of Hawaii. The Republicans supported the Petistic Protestants who demanded prohibition as the northern postbellum economy boomed with heavy and light industry railroads mines fast-growing cities and prosperous agriculture the Republicans took credit and promoted policies to sustain the fast growth. Nevertheless, by 1890 the Republicans had agreed to the Schwerman Antitrust Act and the Interstate Commerce Commission in response to complaints from owners of small businesses and farmers. The high McKinley tariff of 1890 hurt the party, and the Democrats swept to a landslide in the off-year elections even defeating McKinley himself. After the two terms of Democrat Grover Cleveland, the election of William McKinley in 1896 is widely seen as a resurgence of Republican dominance, and is sometimes cited as a realigning election. McKinley promised that high tariffs would end the severe hardship caused by the Panic of 1893, and that Republicans would guarantee a sort of pluralism in which all groups would benefit. 20th century The 1896 realignment cemented the Republicans as the party of big business. While Theodore Roosevelt added more small business support by his embrace of trust-busting, he handpicked his successor William Howard Taft in 1908, but they became enemies on economic issues. Defeated by Taft for the 1912 nomination, Roosevelt bolted the party and led the third party ticket of the Progressive Party. The Republicans returned to the White House throughout the 1920s running on platforms of normalcy, business oriented efficiency, and high tariffs. The National Party avoided the prohibition issue after it became law in 1920. Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover were resoundingly elected in 1920, 1924 and 1928 respectively. The Teapot Dome scandal threatened to hurt the party but Harding died, and Coolidge blamed everything on him as the opposition split in 1924. The pro-business policies of the decade seemed to produce an unprecedented prosperity until the Wall Street crash of 1929 heralded the Great Depression. New Deal Era The New Deal coalition of Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt controlled American politics for most of the next three decades excepting the two-term presidency of Republican Dwight D. Eisenhower, blacks moved into the Democratic Party during the New Deal era. They could vote in the North but not in the South. 
After Roosevelt took office in 1933, New Deal legislation sailed through Congress and the economy moved sharply upward from its nadir in early 1933. However, long-term unemployment remained a drag until 1940. In the 1934 midterm elections, 10 Republican senators went down to defeat, leaving them with only 25 against 71 Democrats. The House of Representatives likewise had overwhelming Democratic majorities. The Republican Party split into a majority old right and a liberal wing based in the Northeast that supported much of the New Deal. The old right sharply attacked the Second New Deal and said it represented class warfare and socialism. Roosevelt was re-elected in a landslide in 1936, but everything went awry in his second term as the economy plunged strikes soared and FDR failed to take control of the Supreme Court or to purge the Southern Conservatives in the Democratic Party. Republicans made a major comeback in the 1938 elections and had new rising stars such as Robert A. Taft of Ohio on the right and Thomas E. Dewey of New York on the left. Southern conservatives joined with most Republicans to form the Conservative Coalition, which dominated domestic issues in Congress until 1964. Both parties split on foreign policy issues with the anti-war isolationists dominant in the Republican Party, and the interventionists who wanted to stop Hitler dominant in the Democratic Party. Roosevelt won a third and fourth term in 1940 and 1944. Conservatives abolished most of the New Deal during the war, but did not attempt to reverse Social Security or the agencies that regulated business. Historian George H. Nash argues, unlike the moderate internationalist, largely East in bloc of Republicans who accepted some of the Roosevelt Revolution and the essential premises of President Truman's foreign policy, the Republican right at heart was counter-revolutionary anti-collectivist, anti-communist, anti-New Deal, passionately committed to limited government, free market economics and congressional prerogatives. The GOP conservatives were obliged from the start to wage a constant two-front war against liberal Democrats from without and me-too Republicans from within. The Democrats elected majorities to Congress almost continuously after 1932, but the conservative coalition blocked practically all major liberal proposals in domestic policy. After 1945 the internationalist wing of the GOP cooperated with Harry Truman's Cold War foreign policy funded the Marshall Plan and supported NATO. Despite the continued isolationism of the old right, the second half of the 20th century saw election or succession of Republican presidents Dwight D. Eisenhower, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush. Eisenhower had defeated conservative leader Senator Robert A. Taft for the 1952 nomination, but conservatives dominated the domestic policies of the Eisenhower administration. Voters liked Ike much more than they liked the GOP and he proved unable to shift the party to a more moderate position. After 1970 the liberal wing began to fade away. Ever since he left office in 1989 Reagan has been the iconic conservative Republican, and Republican presidential candidates frequently claim to share his views and aim to establish themselves and their policies as the more appropriate heir to his legacy. In 1994, the party led by House Minority Whit Newt Gingrich campaigning on the contract with America was elected to majorities to both houses of Congress in the Republican Revolution. However, Gingrich was unable to deliver on most of its promises and after the impeachment and acquittal of President Bill Clinton in 1998 and 1999, and subsequent Republican losses in the House he resigned. Since Reagan's day, presidential elections have been close. However, the Republican presidential candidate won a majority of the popular vote only in 2004. 
while coming in second in 1992, 1996, 2000, 2008, 2012, and 2016. 21st century. The Senate majority lasted until 2001 when the Senate became split evenly, but was regained in the 2002 elections. Both Republican majorities in the House and Senate were held until the Democrats regained control in the midterm elections of 2006. The Republican Party has since been defined by social conservatism, a preemptive war foreign policy intended to defeat terrorism and promote global democracy. A more powerful executive branch supply side economic support for gun ownership and deregulation. In the presidential election of 2008 the party's nominees were Senator John McCain of Arizona for president and Alaska Governor Sarah Palin for vice president. They were defeated by Senator Barack Obama of Illinois and Senator Joe Biden of Delaware. In 2009, Republicans Chris Christie and Bob McDonnell were elected to the governorships of New Jersey and Virginia. 2010 was a year of electoral success for the Republicans starting with the upset win of Scott Brown in the Massachusetts special Senate election for the seat held for many decades by the Democratic Kennedy brothers. In the November elections, Republicans recaptured control of the House, increased their number of seats in the Senate, and gained a majority of governorships. Additionally, Republicans took control of at least 19 Democratic controlled state legislatures. In the presidential election of 2012, the Republican nominees were former Governor Mitt Romney of Massachusetts for president and Representative Paul Ryan of Wisconsin for vice president. The Democrats nominated incumbents Barack Obama and Joe Biden. The campaign focused largely on the Affordable Care Act and President Obama's stewardship of the economy with the country facing high unemployment numbers and a rising national debt four years after his first election. Romney and Ryan were defeated by Obama and Biden. In addition, in the November congressional elections, while Republicans lost seven seats in the House, they retained control. However, Republicans were not able to gain control of the Senate continuing their minority status, with a net loss of two seats. After the 2014 midterm elections, the Republican Party took control of the Senate by gaining nine seats, with a final total of 247 seats in the House and 54 seats in the Senate. The Republicans ultimately achieved the largest majority in the U.S. Congress since the 71st Congress in 1929. After the 2016 elections, Republicans maintained a majority in the Senate House governorships and elected Donald Trump as president. The Republican Party controls 69 of 99 state legislative chambers in 2017. The most it has held held in history in at least 33 governorships the most it has held since 1922. The party has total control of government in 25 states the most since 1952. While the opposing Democratic Party has full control in five states. Recent trends For most of the post-World War II era Republicans had little presence at the state legislative level. This trend began to re reverse in the late 1990s, with Republicans increasing their state legislative presence and taking control of state legislatures in the South which had begun to vote for Republican presidential candidates decades earlier, but had retained Democrats in the legislatures. From 2004 to 2014, the Republican State Leadership Committee raised over $140 million targeted to state legislature races while the Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee raised less than half that during that time period. Following the 2014 midterm elections, 
Republicans control 68 of 98 partisan state legislative houses the most in the party's history, and have control of both the governorship and state legislatures in 24 states as opposed to only seven states with Democratic governors and state legislatures. According to a January 2015 poll by Pew Research, 41% of Americans view the Republicans favorably while 46% view the Democrats favorably. With the inauguration of Republican George W. Bush as president, the Republican Party remained fairly cohesive for much of the 2000s, as both strong economic libertarians and social conservatives opposed the Democrats, whom they saw as the party of bloated and more secular liberal government. The Bush era rise of what were known as pro-government conservatives, a core part of the president space meant that a considerable group of the Republicans advocated for increased government spending and greater regulations covering both the economy and people's personal lives as well as for an activist interventionist foreign policy. Survey groups such as the Pew Research Center found that social conservatives and free market advocates remained the other two main groups within the party's coalition of support with all three being roughly of the same number. However, libertarians and libertarian-leaning conservatives increasingly found fault with what they saw as Republicans restricting of vital civil liberties while corporate welfare and the national debt hiked considerably under Bush's tenure. For example, Doug Bandau, former special assistant to President Ronald Reagan, criticized in the American conservative how many Republican defenders of Bush thought that opposition to any Bush decision is treason as well as how many Bush defenders charged critics with their lack of patriotism. In contrast, some social conservatives expressed dissatisfaction with the party's support for economic policies that they saw as sometimes in conflict with their moral values. In March 2013, National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus gave a stinging report on the party's failures in 2012, calling on Republicans to reinvent themselves and officially endorse immigration reform. He said, There's no one reason we lost. Our message was weak. Our ground game was insufficient. We weren't inclusive. We were behind in both data and digital, and our primary and debate process needed improvement. He proposed 219 reforms that included a $10 million marketing campaign to reach women, minorities, and gays as well as setting a shorter, more controlled primary season, and creating better data collection facilities. With a majority of Republicans, and Republican-leaning independents under the age of 49 supporting legal recognition of same-sex, marriages versus the opposition remaining from those over 50. The issue remains a particular divide within the party. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich has remarked that the party is going to be torn on this issue, with some constituents going to flake off. A Reuters, Ipsos survey from April 2015 found that 68% of Americans overall would attend the same-sex wedding of a loved one with 56% of Republicans agreeing. Reuters journalist Jeff Mason remarks that Republicans who stake out strong opposition to gay marriage could be on shaky political ground if their ultimate goal is to win the White House given the divide between the social conservative stalwarts and the rest of the U.S. that opposes them. The Republican candidate for president in 2012 Mitt Romney lost to incumbent President Barack Obama. The fifth time in six elections the Republican candidate received fewer votes than his Democratic counterpart. In the aftermath of the loss, some prominent Republicans spoke out against their own party, for example, 1996 Republican presidential candidate and longtime former Senator Bob Dole said, Today's GOT members are too conservative and overly partisan. 
they ought to put a sign on the National Committee doors that says closed for repairs. Former Senator Olympia Snow of Maine stated as well that she was in agreement with Dole. Former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs and former Secretary of State Colin Powell remarked that the GOP has a dark vein of intolerance in some parts of the party commenting about the birther movement. W. Heidi senior Republican leaders tolerate this kind of discussion within the party, and I think the party has to take a look at itself. The CRNC released a report in June 2013 that was highly critical of the party being titled Grand Old Party for a Brand New Generation. In presidential elections, 1856 present. Note, when in the Electoral College, is mentioned that means that while the Republicans secured a victory in the Electoral College, they did not receive the most popular votes. Name and Symbols The party's founding members chose the name Republican Party in the mid-1850s as homage to the values of republicanism promoted by Thomas Jefferson's Republican Party. The idea for the name came from an editorial by the party's leading publicist Horace Greeley who called for some simple name like Republican that would more fitly designate those who had united to restore the Union to its true mission of champion and promulgator of liberty rather than propagandist of slavery. The name reflects the 1776 Republican values of civic virtue an opposition to aristocracy and corruption. It is important to note that Republican has a variety of meanings around the world and the U.S. Republican Party has evolved such that the meanings no longer always align. The term, Grand Old Party is a traditional nickname for the Republican Party and the abbreviation, GOP, is a commonly used designation. The term originated in 1875 in the Congressional Record referring to the party associated with a successful military defense of the Union as this gallant old party, the following year in an article in the Cincinnati Commercial. The term was modified to Grand Old Party. The first use of the abbreviation is dated 1884. The traditional mascot of the party is the elephant a political cartoon by Thomas Nast, published in Harper's Weekly on November 7, 1874, is considered the first important use of the symbol. An alternate symbol of the Republican Party in states such as Indiana, New York, and Ohio is the bald eagle as opposed to the Democratic rooster, or the Democratic five-pointed star. In Kentucky, the log cabin is a symbol of the Republican Party. Traditionally the party had no consistent color identity. After the 2000 election, the color red became associated with Republicans. That election night for the first time, all of the major broadcast networks used the same color scheme for the electoral map. States won by Republican nominee George W. Bush were colored red and states won by Democratic nominee Al Gore were colored blue. Although the assignment of colors to political parties is unofficial and informal the media has come to represent the respective political parties using these colors. The party and its candidates have also come to embrace the color red. Economic policies Republicans strongly believe that free markets and individual achievement are the primary factors behind economic prosperity. To this end, they advocate in favor of fiscal conservatism and the elimination of government-run welfare programs in favor of private sector non-profits and encouraging personal responsibility. Modern Republicans advocate the theory of supply-side economics, which holds that lower tax rates increase economic growth. Many Republicans oppose higher tax rates for higher earners, which they believe are unfairly targeted at those who create jobs and wealth. They believe private spending is more efficient than government spending. Republicans believe individuals should take responsibility for their own circumstances. 
They also believe the private sector is more effective in helping the poor through charity than government is through welfare programs, and that social assistance programs often cause government dependency. Some agree there should be some safety net to assist the less fortunate while limiting it to encourage employment and monitoring it to reduce abuse. 2016 and 2017 polls found that an overwhelming majority of Republicans support protectionism and autarky and oppose free trade. Republicans believe corporations should be able to establish their own employment practices including benefits and wages, with the free market deciding the value of work. Since the 1920s, Republicans have generally been opposed by labor union organizations and members. At the national level Republicans supported the Taft-Hartley Act of 1947, which gives workers the right not to participate in unions. Modern Republicans, at the state level generally support various right-to-work laws that weaken unions. Most Republicans tend to oppose increases in the minimum wage, believing that such increases hurt businesses by forcing them to cut and outsource jobs and pass costs along to consumers. The party opposes a government-run single-payer healthcare system, claiming such a system constitutes socialized medicine, while opposed to the Affordable Care Act and its requirement to buy by insurance some Republicans support some of its provisions, such as laws promoting coverage of pre-existing medical conditions. The Republican Party has a mixed record of supporting the historically popular Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid programs, separation of powers and balance of powers. Many contemporary Republicans voice support of strict constructionism, the judicial philosophy that the Constitution should be interpreted as close to the original intent as is practicable. Most Republicans point to Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion nationwide as a case of judicial activism. Republicans favor judicial restraint and have actively sought to block judges whom they see as being activist judges. Republicans believe in federalism, with limitations on federal authorities and a larger role for states. As such, they often take a less expansive reading of congressional power under the Commerce Clause. Environmental Policies Historically progressive leaders in the Republican Party supported environmental protection. Republican President Theodore Roosevelt was a prominent conservationist whose policies eventually led to the creation of the National Park Service. While Republican President Richard Nixon was not an environmentalist, he signed legislation to create the Environmental Protection Agency in 1970, and had a comprehensive environmental program. However this position has changed since the 1980s, and the administration of President Ronald Reagan, who labeled environmental regulations a burden on the economy. Since then Republicans have increasingly taken positions against environmental regulation. Since the 1990s a significant part of the U.S. conservative movement has worked to challenge climate science and climate policy, while the scientific consensus for human activity created climate warming is around 97% according to a Pew Research survey. 44% of American adults in the general public acknowledged human activity as the cause of climate change and 23% of Republicans. Republican views on global warming and scientific consensus on climate change show a similar trend, and few Republican lawmakers support climate policy that builds on international consensus. In 2006 then-California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger broke from Republican orthodoxy to sign several bills imposing caps on carbon emissions in California. George W. Bush then U.S. President opposed mandatory caps at a national level. Bush's decision not to regulate carbon dioxide as a pollutant was challenged in the Supreme Court by 12 states.
with the court ruling against the Bush administration in 2007. Bush also publicly opposed ratification of the Kyoto Protocols which sought to limit greenhouse gas emissions and thereby combat climate change a decision heavily criticized by climate scientists. Senator John McCain has also previously proposed laws regulating carbon emissions, such as the McCain-Lieberman Climate Stewardship Act. Although his position on climate change is unusual among high-ranking party members, some Republican candidates have supported development of alternative fuels in order to achieve energy independence for the U.S. The Republican Party rejects cap-and-trade policy to limit carbon emissions. Some Republicans support increased oil drilling in protected areas such as the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, a position that has drawn criticism from activists. Many Republicans, during the presidency of Barack Obama, had opposed the then-current president's new environmental regulations such as those on carbon emissions from coal. In particular, many Republicans support building the Keystone Pipeline which is supported by businesses, but opposed by indigenous peoples groups and environmental activists. The Republican Party in the United States is unique in denying anthropogenic climate change among conservative political parties across the Western world, from 2008 to 2017. The Republican Party went from debating how to combat human-caused climate change to arguing that it does not exist according to the New York Times. In 2011 more than half of the Republicans in the House and three-quarters of Republican senators said that the threat of global warming is a man-made and highly threatening phenomenon is at best an exaggeration and at worst an utter hoax, according to Judith Warner writing in the New York Times magazine. In 2014 more than 55% of congressional Republicans were climate change deniers according to NBC News. According to PolitiFact in May 2014, relatively few Republican members of Congress don't accept the prevailing scientific conclusion that Global warming is both real and man-made, 8 out of 278 or about 3%. In 2016 Oklahoma State University professor of environmental sociology Riley Dunlap and his co-authors wrote in the peer-reviewed journal Environment, Science and Policy for Sustainable Development, Republican antipathy to governmental regulations combined with enormous campaign contributions to the GOP from fossil fuel interests, means that most Republican politicians have strong ideological as well as material reasons for opposing measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in addition to pressure from party activists and voters. A 2017 study by the Center for American Progress Action Fund of Climate Change Denial in the United States Congress found 180 members who deny the science behind climate change, all were Republicans. In 2014 Democrats scored 87 percent and Republican 4 percent on the National Environmental Scorecard of the League of Conservation Voters. In 2016 the average House Republican score was 5%, the average Senate Republican score was 14%, the average House Democrat score was 94%, and the average Senate Democrat score was 95%. Immigration Republicans are divided on how to confront illegal immigration between a platform that allows for migrant workers in a path to citizenship versus a position focused on securing the border and deporting illegal immigrants. In 2006 the White House supported and Republican-led Senate passed comprehensive immigration reform that would eventually allow millions of illegal immigrants to become citizens but the House also led by Republicans did not advance the bill. After the defeat in the 2012 presidential election, Particularly among Latinos, several Republicans 
Americans advocated a friendlier approach to immigrants. However, in 2016 the field of candidates took a sharp position against illegal immigration, with leading candidate Donald Trump proposing building a wall along the southern border with Mexico and using tariffs on goods imported from Mexico to pay for construction. Proposals calling for immigration reform with a path to citizenship have attracted broad Republican support in some polls. In a 2013 poll, 60% of Republicans supported the pathway concept. Foreign policy and national defense some in the Republican Party support unilateralism on issues of national security, believing in the ability and right of the United States to act without external support in matters of its national defense. In general, Republican thinking on defense and international relations is heavily influenced by the theories of neo-realism and realism characterizing conflicts between nations as struggles between faceless forces of international structure as opposed to being the result of the ideas and actions of individual leaders. The realist school's influence shows in Reagan's evil empire stance on the Soviet Union and George W. Bush's axis of evil stance. Since the September 11, 2001 attacks, Many in the party have supported neoconservative policies with regard to the war on terror, including the 2001 war in Afghanistan and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The George W. Bush administration took the position that the Geneva Conventions do not apply to unlawful combatants, while other prominent Republicans strongly oppose the use of enhanced interrogation techniques which they view as torture. Republicans have frequently advocated for restricting foreign aid as a means of asserting the national security and immigration interests of the United States. The Republican Party generally supports a strong alliance with Israel and efforts to secure peace in the Middle East between Israel and its Arab neighbors. In recent years, Republicans have begun to move away from the two-state solution approach to resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. According to the 2016 RNC platform, the party's stance on the status of Taiwan is that we oppose any unilateral steps by either side to alter the status quo in the Taiwan Straits on the principle that all issues regarding the island's future must be resolved peacefully through dialogue and be agreeable to the people of Taiwan. In addition, if China were to violate those principles, the United States, in accord with the Taiwan Relations Act, will help Taiwan defend itself. In a 2014 poll, 59% of Republicans favored doing less abroad and focusing on the country's own problems instead. Social policies the Republican Party is generally associated with social conservative policies, although it does have dissenting centrist and libertarian factions. The social conservatives want laws that uphold their traditional values such as opposition to same-sex marriage, abortion and marijuana. Most conservative Republicans also oppose gun control, affirmative action and illegal immigration abortion and embryonic stem cell research. A majority of the party's national and state candidates are pro-life and oppose elective abortion on religious and moral grounds. While many advocate exceptions in the case of incest rape for their mother's life being at risk, in 2012 the party approved a platform advocating banning abortions without exception. They oppose government funding for abortions, Although Republicans have voted for increases in government funding of scientific research, some members actively oppose the federal funding of embryonic stem cell research beyond the original lines because it involves the destruction of human embryos. Civil rights Republicans are generally against affirmative action for women and some minorities often describing it as a quota system and believing that it is not meritocratic. 
and that it is counterproductive socially by only further promoting discrimination. Many Republicans support race-neutral admissions policies in universities, but support taking into account the socioeconomic status of the student. Drugs Republicans have historically supported the war on drugs and opposed the legalization of drugs. More recently several prominent Republicans have advocated for the reduction and reform of mandatory sentencing laws with regards to drugs. Education Most Republicans support school choice through charter schools and school vouchers for private schools, denounce the performance of the urban public school system and the teachers' unions. The party has insisted on a system of greater accountability for public schools, most prominently in recent years with the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. Many Republicans, including Ronald Reagan, oppose the creation of the United States Department of Education when it was initially created in 1979. LGBT rights Owing largely to the prominence of the religious right in conservative politics in the United States, the Republican Party has taken positions regarded by many as outwardly hostile to the gay rights movement. Republicans have historically strongly opposed same-sex marriage, with the issue a galvanizing one that many believe helped George W. Bush win re-election in 2004. In both 2004 and 2006 congressional Republican leaders promoted the Federal Marriage Amendment, a proposed constitutional amendment which would legally restrict the definition of marriage to heterosexual couples. In both attempts the amendment failed to secure enough votes to unvote cloture and thus ultimately was never passed, as more states legalized same-sex marriage in the 2010s. Republicans increasingly supported allowing each state to decide its own marriage policy. The Republican Party platform opposed the inclusion of gay people in the military from 1992. To present, LGBT groups within the Republican Party include the Log Cabin Republicans. A 2014 Pew Research poll indicated that 61% of millennial Republicans are in favor of same-sex marriage anti-discrimination laws the republican party opposed the inclusion of sexual preference in anti-discrimination statutes from 1992 to 2004 the 2008 and 2012 republican party platforms supported anti-discrimination statutes based on sex race age religion, creed, disability and national origin but both platforms were silent on sexual orientation and gender identity. A 2013 poll found that 61% of Republicans support laws protecting gay and lesbian people against employment discrimination, and a 2007 poll showed 60% of Republicans supported expanding federal hate crime laws to include sexual orientation and gender identity. Puerto Rican statehood The 2016 Republican Party platform declares, We support the right of the United States citizens of Puerto Rico to be admitted to the Union as a fully sovereign state. We further recognize the historic significance of the 2012 local referendum in which a 54% majority voted to end Puerto Rico's current status as a U.S. territory, and 61% chose statehood over options for sovereign nationhood. We support the federally sponsored political status referendum authorized and funded by an act of Congress in 2014 to ascertain the aspirations of the people of Puerto Rico. Once the 2012 local vote for statehood is ratified, Congress should approve an enabling act with terms for Puerto Rico's future admission as the 51st state of the Union. Composition Prior to the formation of the conservative coalition which helped realign the Democratic 
and Republican Party ideologies in the mid-1960s. The party had historically advocated classical liberalism and progressivism. The party is a full member of the Conservative International Democrat Union as well as the Asia Pacific Democrat Union. It is also an associate member of the Alliance of Conservatives and Reformists in Europe which has close relations to the Conservative Party of the United Kingdom. According to the most recent Gallup poll, 25% of Americans identify as Republican and 16% identify as leaning Republican. In comparison, 30% identify as Democratic and 16% identify as leaning Democratic. The Democratic Party has typically held an overall edge in party identification. Since Gallup began polling on the issue in 1991, in another Gallup poll 42% of Republicans and Republican-leaning independents identified as economically and socially conservative followed by 24% as socially and economically moderate or liberal, 20% as socially moderate or liberal and fiscally conservative and 10% as socially conservative and fiscally moderate or liberal. Historically speaking the Republican base initially consisted of Northern white Protestants and African Americans nationwide with the first presidential candidate John C. Fremont receiving almost no votes in the South. This trend continued into the 20th century, with 1944 Republican presidential candidate Thomas E. Dewey having only 10% of his popular votes in the South. After the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the core base shifted considerably, with the southern United States becoming more reliably Republican in presidential politics, and the northeastern United States becoming more reliably Democratic especially since 1992. Every northeastern state except for New Hampshire has voted Democratic six straight elections or more. The party's current base consists of groups such as white married Protestants, rural and suburban citizens and non-union workers without college degrees with urban residents, ethnic minorities, the unmarried and union workers having shifted to the Democratic Party. Establishment versus anti-establishment in addition to splits over ideology the party can be broadly divided into the establishment and anti-establishment. Nationwide polls of Republican voters in 2014 by the Pew Center identified a growing split in the Republican coalition between business conservatives or establishment conservatives and steadfast conservatives or populist conservatives. The Tea Party movement is typically aligned with the Republican Party, but it feuds with the pro-business wing of the party which it sees as too moderate and too willing to compromise. In Congress Eric Cantor's position as majority leader went to California Congressman Kevin McCarthy who had been an advocate of the Export-Import Bank. It finances overseas purchases of American products, especially airplanes. However, after meeting with populist Congressman McCarthy changed positions and decided to support the termination of the bank. Conservatives, moderates, liberals and progressives Republican conservatives are strongest in the South Mountain West and Midwest, where they draw support from social conservatives. The moderates tend to dominate the party in New England and used to be well represented in all states from the 1940s to the 1970s under such leaders as Dwight D. Eisenhower, Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. They usually dominated the presidential wing of the party. Since the 1970s, they have been less powerful, though they are always represented in the cabinets of Republican presidents. In Vermont, Jim Jeffers, a Republican senator, became an independent in 2001 due to growing disagreement with President Bush and the party leadership. In addition, moderate Republicans have recently held the governorships in several New England states, 
while Lincoln Chafee, a former moderate Republican senator, is an independent turned Democrat, former governor of Rhode Island, former Senator Olympia Snow, and current Senator Susan Collins, both of Maine, and former Senator Scott Brown of Massachusetts, are notable moderate Republicans from New England. Former Senator Mark Kirk is another example of a moderate Republican from a Democratic stronghold. Illinois who ironically held the Senate seat once held by President Barack Obama. From 1991 to 2007 moderate Republicans served as governors of Massachusetts. Prominent Republican moderates have included former presidents Dwight Eisenhower, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford and George Bush Sr. as well as former Senate leaders Howard Baker and Bob Dole. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney and former New York City Mayors Rudy Giuliani and Michael Bloomberg, some well-known conservative and libertarian conservative radio hosts, including national figures such as Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Larry Elder, Glenn Beck, Alex Jones, Mark Levin, Dana Loesch, Neil Bortz, Laura Ingraham, Dennis Praga, Michael Reagan, Howie Carr, and Michael Savage as well as many local commentators support Republican causes, while vocally opposing those of the Democrats. Historically, the Republican Party has included a liberal wing made up of individuals who, like members of the liberal wing of the Democratic Party believe in the power of government to improve people's lives. Before 1932 leading progressive Republicans included Theodore Roosevelt, Robert M. La Follette Sr., Charles Evan Hughes, Hiram Johnson, William Bora, George W. Norris, Hiram Johnson and Fiorello LaGuardia. Prominent liberal Republicans 1936 to the 1970s included Alf Landon, Wendell Wilkie, Earl Warren, Thomas Dewey, Prescott, Bush, Nelson Rockefeller, Henry Cabot Lodge Jr., George W. Romney, William Scranton, Charles Mathias, Lowell Wayaker, and Jacob Javits. Since 1976 liberalism has virtually faded out of the Republican Party apart from a few Northeastern holdouts. Business community Republicans are usually seen as the traditionally pro-business party and it garners major support from a wide variety of industries from the financial sector to small businesses. Republicans are about 50% more likely to be self-employed and are more likely to work in management. A survey cited by the Washington Post in 2012 stated that 61% of small business owners planned to vote for then-Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Small business became a major theme of the 2012 Republican National Convention. For example, South Dakota Senator John Thun discussed his grandfather's hardware store, and New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayotte referred to her husband's landscaping company. Gender since 1980 a gender gap has seen slightly stronger support for the Republican Party among men than among women. In 2012 Obama won 55 percent of the women and 45 percent of the men, and more women voted than men. In the 2006 House races 43 percent of women voted Republican while 47 percent of men did so. In the 2010 midterms the gender gap was reduced with women supporting Republican and Democratic candidates equally 49% to 49%. In recent elections, Republicans have found their greatest support among whites from married couples, with children living at home. Unmarried and divorced women were far more likely to vote for Kerry in 2004. The 2012 returns revealed a continued weakness among unmarried women. For the GOP a large and growing portion of the electorate, although Mitt Romney lost women as a whole 44-55 to Barack Obama, he won married women 53-46. Obama won unmarried women 67-31. Education 
In 2012 the Pew Research Center conducted a study of registered voters with a 35-28 Democrat to Republican gap. They found that self-described Democrats had a 8 advantage over Republicans among college graduates 14 of all postgraduates polled. Republicans were 11 among white men with college degrees Democrats 10 among women with degrees. Democrats accounted for 36% of all respondents with an education of high school or less. Republicans were 28%. When isolating just white registered voters polled, Republicans had a 6 advantage overall and were 9 of those with a high school education or less. An analysis of 2008 through 2012 survey data from the General Social Survey, the National Election Studies and the Pew Research Center for the People and the Press led to the following assessment of the overall educational status of self-identified Democrats and Republicans. On average self-identified Republicans have more years of education and are probably more likely to hold at the least a four-year college degree. It also appears that Republicans continue to outtest Democrats in surveys that assess political knowledge and or current events. With respect to postgraduate studies, the educational advantage is shifting towards self-identified Democrats. They are now more likely to hold postgraduate college degrees ethnicity. Republicans have been winning under 15 percent of the black vote in recent national elections. While historically the party had been supporters of rights for African Americans starting in the 1860s it lost its leadership position in the 1960s. The party abolished slavery under Abraham Lincoln defeated the slave power and gave blacks the legal right to vote during Reconstruction in the late 1860s. Until the New Deal of the 1930s blacks supported the Republican Party by large margins. Black voters shifted to the Democratic Party beginning in the 1930s, when major Democratic figures such as Eleanor Roosevelt began to support civil rights, and the New Deal offered them employment opportunities. They became one of the core components of the New Deal coalition in the South. After the Voting Rights Act to prohibit racial discrimination in elections was passed by a bipartisan coalition in 1965, blacks were able to vote again and ever since have formed a significant portion of the Democratic vote in that region. For decades, a greater percentage of white voters identified themselves as Democrats rather than Republicans. However, since the mid-1990s, whites have been more likely to self-identify as Republicans than Democrats. In the 2010 elections, two African American Republicans were elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. The party has recently nominated African American candidates for senator or governor in Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania and Maryland, though none were successful. In recent decades Republicans have been moderately successful in gaining support from Hispanic and Asian American voters. George W. Bush, who campaigned energetically for Hispanic votes, received 35% of their vote in 2000 and 44% in 2004. The party's strong anti-communist stance has made it popular among some minority groups. From current and former communist states in particular Cuban Americans, Korean Americans, Chinese Americans and Vietnamese Americans. The election of Bobby Jindal as governor of Louisiana has been hailed as pathbreaking. He is the first elected minority governor in Louisiana and the first state governor of Indian descent. According to John Avlon in 2013, the Republican Party is more diverse at the statewide elected official level than the Democratic Party including Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. In 2012 88% of Romney voters were white, while 56% of Obama voters were white. 
In the 2008 presidential election, John McCain won 55% of white votes, 35% of Asian votes, 31% of Hispanic votes, and 4% of African American votes. In the 2010 House election, Republicans won 60% of the white votes, 38% of Hispanic votes, and 9% of the African American vote. Religious beliefs Religion has always played a major role for both parties but in the course of a century. The party's religious compositions have changed. Religion was a major dividing line between the parties before 1960 with Catholics, Jews, and Southern Protestants heavily Democratic and Northeastern Protestants heavily Republican. Most of the old differences faded away after the realignment of the 1970s and 80s that undercut the New Deal coalition. Voters who attend Church Weekly gave 61% of their votes to Bush in 2004. Those who attend occasionally gave him only 47%, while those who never attend gave him 36%. 59% of Protestants voted for Bush along with 52% of Catholics. Since 1980, large Majorities of evangelicals have voted Republican. 70-80% voted for Bush in 2000-2004, and 70% for Republican House candidates in 2006. Jews continue to vote 70-80% Democratic. Democrats have close links with the African American churches especially the National Baptists while their historic dominance among Catholic voters has eroded to 54-46 in the 2010 midterms. The mainline traditional Protestants have dropped to about 55% Republican. The mainline denominations are rapidly shrinking in size. Mormons in Utah and neighboring states voted 75% or more for Bush in 2000 while Catholic Republican leaders try to stay in line with the teachings of the Catholic Church on subjects such as abortion, euthanasia, embryonic stem cell research and same-sex marriage they differ on the death penalty and contraception. Pope Francis's 2015 encyclical Laudato Si sparked a discussion on the positions of Catholic Republicans in relation to the positions of the Church. The Pope's encyclical on behalf of the Catholic Church officially acknowledges a man-made climate change caused by burning fossil fuels. The Pope says the warming of the planet is rooted in a throwaway culture and the developed world's indifference to the destruction of the planet in pursuit of short-term economic gains. According to the New York Times, Laudato Si put pressure on the Catholic candidates in the 2016 election, Jeb Bush, Bobby Jindal, Marco Rubio and Rick Santorum, with leading Democrats praising the encyclical James Bretsky, a professor of moral theology at Boston College has said that both sides were being disingenuous. I think it shows that both the Republicans and the Democrats, like to use religious authority and in this case the Pope to support positions they have arrived at independently. There is a certain insincerity or hypocrisy, I think, on both sides. While a Pew Research poll indicates Catholics are more likely to believe the Earth is warming than non-Catholics, 51% of Catholic Republicans believe in global warming and only 24% of Catholic Republicans believe global warming is caused by human activity. Geography Since 1980 geographically the Republican base is strongest in the South, the Midwest, and Mountain West, while it is weakest on the West Coast and Northeast. This has not always been the case. Historically the Northeast was a bastion of the Republican Party with Vermont, and Maine being the only two states to vote against Franklin Roosevelt all four times. In the Northeast Maine, New Hampshire and Pennsylvania continue to have a considerable Republican presence. The Midwest has been roughly balanced since 1854, 
with Illinois becoming more democratic and liberal because of the city of Chicago and Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan and Wisconsin more Republican since 1990, Ohio, Missouri, and Indiana all trend Republican. Since the 1930s the Democrats have dominated most central cities, while the Republicans now dominate rural areas and the majority of suburbs. The South has become solidly Republican in national elections since 1980, and has been trending Republican at the state level since then at a slower pace. In 2004, Bush led Kerry by 70% 30% among Southern whites who made up 71% of the Southern electorate. Kerry had a 70-30 lead among the 29% of the voters who were black or Hispanic. One third of these Southern voters said they were white evangelicals, they voted for Bush by 80-20, but were only 72% Republican in 2006. The Southwest, traditionally a Republican stronghold is now more balanced owing to the impact of migration both from Mexico and other states. Texas and Arizona, while still strongly Republican states, have both become more Democratic in recent years. Colorado, Nevada, and New Mexico all trend Democratic. The Republican Party's strongest focus of political influence lies in the Great Plains states, particularly Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, and North Dakota, and in the mountain states of Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah. These states are sparsely populated, with few major urban centers and have majority white populations making it extremely difficult for Democrats to create a sustainable voter base there, while still remaining notably Republican. Montana is the only state in the region with a more moderate lean. Unlike the South, these areas have been strongly Republican since before the party realignments of the 1960s. The Great Plains states were one of the few areas of the country where Republicans had any significant support during the Great Depression. Structure and Organization the Republican National Committee is responsible for promoting Republican campaign activities. It is responsible for developing and promoting the Republican political platform, as well as coordinating fundraising and election strategy. Its current chairwoman is Ronna Romney McDaniel. The chair of the RNC is chosen by the president. When the Republicans have the White House or otherwise by the party's state committees, the RNC, under the direction of the party's presidential candidate, supervises the Republican National Convention and raises funds for candidates. On the local level, there are similar state committees in every state and most large cities, counties, and legislative districts, but they have far less money and influence than the national body. The Republican House and Senate caucuses have separate fundraising and strategy committees. The National Republican Congressional Committee assists in House races, while the National Republican Senatorial Committee does so in Senate races. They each raise over $100 million per election cycle and play important roles in recruiting strong state candidates, while the Republican Governors Association assists in state gubernatorial races. In 2016 it is chaired by Governor Susana Martinez of New Mexico. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?